What is going on guys? My name is Jake and today I'm bringing you part one of a three-part series that will be how I am running Death Knights in 5.4 and the first video in the series will be with none other than the most infamous of them all, the Frost Death Knight. Let's get to it. All right guys, let's start off with our talents. Our first tier talent is going to be Unholy Blight. Reason why I'm choosing Unholy Blight is with Frost, you're all about your obliterate and with obliterate with more diseases on the target you deal more damage having a move that's going to give you both diseases on target while outbreak is on cooldown and costs you zero runes you can't go wrong with it it's a very strong pick as is plague leech but plague leech does take the diseases off but it does give you runes back it's kind of an iffy one there you could take unholy blight you could take plague leech there's no two no there's no real wrong way of going but for me i'm going unholy blight all right, second tier. Now, the second tier talent is, bef well, before 5.4, you had some options on this one. It was kind of like the first tier now, where you have two strong picks, but one was just a little bit better. And now, with the changes in 5.4, your second tier talent, nine times out of ten, is going to be Lichborn. Lichborn is a great move for a few reasons. One, you can macro it into a heal, where if you have a lot of earning power, you can start death calling yourself for heals. Secondly, it can break your fears, your sleeps, you can break a lot of stuff. It's going to stop a lot of CC on you. And as Death Knights, we need to stay on target as hard as we can. So be able to break CC and be CC immune for a short amount of time, Lichborn is definitely the strong pick and my recommended pick for the second tier talent. All right, now it's time for the third tier. Now the third tier talent is kind of a pick your own poison. There is no real wrong choice in this one because they're all actually really good. The first one you have is Dust Advance, which is going to make you passively move faster. And when you activate it, you get a speed boost. And if you do get a slow on you, you can activate it and then move at 100% movement speed. It's a great, great move if you're in an RBG with, a, you know, mages and frost death knights and a lot of classes that are going to put slows onto you. It'll make it so you can still be moving at your normal pace. And with a 45 second cooldown, it's really not that bad. Moving on to the second talent choice is Chillblains. Chillblains is a really strong pick for Frost. Being that you spam Howling Blast a lot, it's going to apply slows onto the target, and it's going to make your Chains of Ice root the targets. Very powerful pick on a map like Silver Shard Mines or any FC map to slow the flag carrier up. Chillblains is always a strong pick for all Frost Death Knights and occasionally an Unholy, but this is the Frost Guide. So, I'm going to say Chillblains is ahead of Death Advance, but it doesn't take the lead. The winning talent, in my opinion, the one that takes it all in the third tier, is going to be Asphyxiate. Having a stun every 30 seconds is extremely strong. Having that stun can be the difference between getting a kill and being able to take a base, kill an FC, get an orb, do anything like that whatsoever. Having a quick stun like Asphyxiate is too strong not to use. I highly recommend it for any Death Knight, period. And for Frost, it's my go-to move, and I will always be joining really, really hard on his fixed date. It's going to be a rare time when I'm not using it. Now onto our fourth tier talent, as I like to just call the healing tier. This is the moves you're going to be getting for your heals as a Death Knight. Now on this tier, you have Death Pact, Death Siphon, and Conversion. Death Pact previously was the king healing move for Death Knights. I mean, you got a huge heal, you sacked the pet, it was really worth it. Death Siphon hasn't been a real viable choice for 90 Death Knights, even though I did show the little damage trick. And it is a pretty strong heal regardless, PvE or PvP, but the fact that it does cost a death rune is very costly. Finally, that brings us to Conversion. Honestly, you're not going to find many Death Knights not running Conversion. It's a second win that we can activate at any point, and if you know how to manage your running power properly, you can keep yourself healed up for quite a while. So this one's a no-brainer. Fourth tier, hit Conversion. Have a second win whenever you want it. Time for the fifth tier. Now the fifth tier, I feel there is no real wrong answer. It's really a great tier for Death Knights. You have Blood Tap, with, with your stacks, you can really actually get your runes back extremely fast if you know how to do it in the right timing. You know, pumping out runic power and pumping out damage at the same time and turning your runes extremely quickly. Blood Tap can be a very powerful move. Runic Empowerment, as well as another strong move with its procs, where you're going to be getting your runes back, as it is Runic Corruption with its haste increase. You really can't go wrong with any of these talents. There is no real wrong pick, but the majority in the popularity pick for Death Knights in PvP and for Frost is going to be Blood Tap. 
And I'm going to show you a macro when we get to the macro parts for how you're going to be using blood tap to make it even better for yourself. So sixth tier, I'm sorry, fifth tier, we're going blood tap, guys. All right, now we're at the final tier, level 90. Now, two out of three in this tree are very good. You have Desecrated Grind, which will act as a breakout trinket and immune to any and all CC that gets on you other than Roots. For a fair amount of time, it's a great, it's, it's a really strong breakout. Any type of class that is big on CCing you hates Desecrated Ground. You stand in it and you can't be touched. It's really strong. It's a great move for arenas and it's also a great move for RBGs. Now, it's kind of, I guess you can say it's a competitor for it. Is Gorfine's Grasp. Gorfine's Grasp is really great for RBGs if you're going to do a Frost Mages, or just not Frost, but any type of Mages, Ring of Frost, and a Boomkin Cyclone Solar Beam. It's a really strong combination to CC teams. Also on certain maps like uh, Silver Shard Mines, being able to grip people out of cards so your team can get control of the card is also a really strong move. Though myself, personally, I'll be running Desecrated Ground 9 times out of 10. Stopping CC, making so I can't be feared, can't be stunned, can't be sapped, can't be anything is too good not to have. So last year, guys, desecrated ground. Now we're going to be moving on to our glyphs. We're going to start off with our majors. Top of the order, the one that's been the most reliable for the longest time, and it's going to be the glyph of AMS. Now for those who don't know how this works, previously AMS had a certain amount of damage it would absorb, but you'd still take a few hits. With this glyph, it absorbs all incoming damage, all 100% incoming magical damage. Now, the best part about it is the glyph itself, when you put the shield on, whatever the shield size you get is determined by your health. 50% of what your maximum health is, is that shield. Best part of that also is the bigger the shield, more damage you can take. More damage you can take, more runic power you'll regen because every single time you are hit with AMS up by a magical dealing uh, effect, you gain runic power. Bigger shield, more protection, incoming runic power. So the glyph of AMS, without a doubt, is one of the strongest picks you can have for your majors. Moving on, we're going to the glyph of Icebound Fortitude. Now this glyph, I had my reserves about this glyph for a real long time. A really long time. And then I kind of just, I kind of got over it. See, a lot of people don't like the Glyph of Icebound Fortitude because it takes the duration and kills it by 75%. And that's a lot. That's a whole lot. But it does reduce the cooldown by 50%. So, you're probably thinking, why am I going with this? If my one big defensive cooldown against melee... Is gonna have its time reduced just for cooldown reduction. Why? It's simple. If you're relying on Icebound Fortitude to keep you alive, then you're in bad luck already. You're you're screwed. You're dead. Here's the facts. Icebound Fortitude will not save you unless you're in blood, because with blood it reduces the damage by 50%. But as Frost, it's only gonna be by 20. So what you're gonna be using Icebound Fortitude is as a breakout. It is gonna be a stun breaker. And that's it. You're not going to be popping Icebound like, oh, Icebound Fortitude, lol, can't touch me. Doesn't work like that. It's nothing but a stun break. Keep that in mind when you're using this. Don't think, oh, I'm getting low. I'm going to pop Icebound. No. You get stunned, you need to spin a flag. You get stunned, you need to get back in that cart. You get stunned, so on and so forth. Pop Icebound before you pop your Trinket or before you pop Desecrated Ground. Icebound first. It's going to have the shortest cooldown between the three of them. And finally... We have the Glyph of Icy Touch. Now, the third Glyph in this set is optional. It is optional. It has some pretty good counters to it. There's some other Glyphs that can easily take its spot. For myself, I like the Glyph of Icy Touch on most all maps. Being able to dispel haunts off of, a, of an enemy target is fantastic. Plus, being Frost, if you get a Rhyme proc, it's going to make it so you can get free dispels because Rhyme will make a free Howling Blast and a free Icy Touch come up. When you get them come up, hit Icy Touch, goodbye Hots, goodbye Hots, goodbye Hots, goodbye everything. It's fantastic. But let's say you like using those Rhymes for Howling Blast spam. We all do. <laughs> we all do. It's okay. So that's why we have different alternatives for that glyph. One of them, this one's really good for Arena and pretty decent for RBGs, would be Dark Simulacrum. 
It makes it you can steal spells a whole lot faster and increases the duration for how long you have that spell stolen for a little bit longer. Very strong glyph to use in the right hands and stolen with the right spells. Next, we have the glyph of Death and Decay. Really great one because it's, it's going to slow enemies by 50%. It's got a really big range to it. It's very, very powerful on maps where you're trying to slow people, you're trying to stop people from getting somewhere, so on and so forth. This next one, I might get a little flack for, but I can feel like it's somewhat viable now due to its damage reduced nerf. It is Glyph of Enduring Infection. As Frost, we're not really primed to do dot damage. We're all about our obliterates. So being able to make sure we keep diseases on the target guaranteed is pretty damn good. It's good to have. Another one will be Loud Horn. Just so you can get the 10 extra runic power, even though you do get the cooldown reduction. Or I mean, actually the increased cooldown. Next is going to be the Glyph of Shifting Presences. Keep 70% of your runic power when you start stance dancing. It's always a great thing to have. And finally, if you're not running Asphyxiate, you can Glyph Strangulate for an extra 2 seconds. It's another great little Glyph that you can substitute for Icy Touch. Myself, I'll be using Icy Touch and Death on Decay primarily. Alright guys, now we're going on to the Minor Glyphs. Now for Death Knights, Minor Glyphs are really not that important, unfortunately. Minor Glyphs are pretty minuscule. They do put the Minor in Minor Glyphs when you get right down to it. Usually they're just cosmetic. And now there's only, and as always really, one glyph that you need, rest are optional. Let's start with the optionals. First one I'm using is the glyph of long winter. Makes my horn of winter last an actual hour. Makes it seem like it's a real buff and not just five minutes. Personally, I like that. It's kind of aesthetic, you know, it's an, it's an hour instead of five minutes. So it stays on longer. I think that's a pretty good thing. Next we're using glyph of the skeleton. Why? Because I spent way too much gold on this cliff, and you know what? Even though I barely ever raise a skeleton as a Frost Death Knight, why not? Because you know what? He looks cool, he's got armor, he looks like he's out of ICC. I like that. But, that does lead us to the one glyph you do need. This is a glyph pretty much for a lot of Death Knights that's very important. That is a glyph of Resilient Grip. When your Death Grip fails because its target is immune, its cooldown is reset. So let's say you're after a target who just got hit by a Frost Nova. Mage stopped him in place, but he's also rooted. So instead, you can just spam your death grip over and over and over until you go full Scorpion and grip him on back to you, and then you can destroy him. So two miners, one you got to really go for in Resilient Grip. That's the glyphs, guys. Let's move on. All right, now we're going on to probably the shortest and the simplest part of this video is the gemming. Now, gemming for Frost Death Knight, the way I'm playing it, it's really, really simple, guys. Strength. 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 And guess what? Strength. <laughs> Just a lot of strength. Now, the one thing I can tell you that's going to be a little bit different will be your meta gem. Now, the meta gem is kind of a pick-your-own-poison right now. You can go for the tyrannical meta gem, which will give you PvP power and resilience. You can go for the Reverberating Primal Diamond, which is going to give you the, th the 216 strength and 3% critical effect. And finally, if you can, you can go for the Legendary Meta Gem, which I'm currently working for right now. And I'm hoping I can get it before I buy my new headpiece, which is going to be in two weeks. So at this point, guys, I'm going to say you can go whatever you want. But I'm going to say the best piece you can get it will be the Legendary, followed by the... Uh, I'm going to say it's a tie between the Reverberating and the Tyrannical kind of go with, with your gut on that one guys but myself if you can go for the legendary meta it is the best one all right guys now we're going to be moving on to our reforging or therefore lack of it now for the way i'm going for my stat priority i'm going haste crit mastery reason being haste is probably the most important stat for a death knight because that's going to increase our rune speed faster rune speed more damage you can't go wrong there following that with crit I mean, it's crit. Harder you crit, the better. More crits, more hits. You, you can't go wrong. Crits. Crits, crits, crits. I like crits. <laughs> and finally, mastery. Mastery isn't important for frost as it could be for unholy because our mastery is going to increase frost damage as in howling blast, icy touch, chains of ice. Not that really important because it doesn't affect obliterate. Doesn't affect obliterate, doesn't matter. That's how frost rolls, guys. So remember, you're going to be going haste, crit, mastery all right guys now we're moving on to our macros now being someone that doesn't do arenas very often i'm mainly someone who likes in to just do rbgs i enjoy rbgs more than i enjoy arenas 
I don't have a use for a ton of macros. But the macros that I do have, I will show on the screen and as well, I will leave into the description so you can just simply copy and paste them and make the macros if you don't already have them yourself. First one's gonna be the Blood Tap Frost Strike macro. What makes this macro so strong is that it will automatically re-roll over your blood taps and make it so you can get your runes back instantly. There's no need to have that extra move on your bars anywhere when Frost Strike will constantly just reset it for you over and over and over. Secondly, we're gonna have the Burst macro. The Burst macro you guys have seen in every Death Knight video that I've done that has a breakdown to it like this one. It's only changed slightly from you know the, my play style. Currently, it's Cast Outbreak, Cast Pillar of Frost, Cast Blood Fury, since I am an orc, and then use my gloves because I have engineering, so I get the strength increase. Now, I know what some people will ask me, why don't you have the Onyx PvP trinket in there? Two reasons. One, if you have engineering and you have those gloves, whatever comes first in the macro will be used. You cannot have the gloves and your PvP trinket active at one time doesn't work, you'll have to wait for the cooldown. Secondly, I'm not actually using a PvP trinket. I'm not using the on use. I'm using a proc trinket that I got from raiding while I did some in 5.3. I got three really nice PvE trinkets, and right now I'm trying out the Spark of the Zendalari for the haste increased. I find it to be pretty decent, but if you don't have that trinket and you can get some other ones, I can easily recommend that you pick up either Primordius Talisman of Rage or the Fable Feather of Jaikun. Either or, that's what I'm doing for my trinket, and that's why that's not in that macro. Next, I have my Stance Dance. Stance Dance is really simple. You cast Blood Presence, you cast Unholy Presence, cast Frost Presence, whatever it is. And you can just, you know, you can see that, oh, I'm getting focused right now. I gotta go Blood Presence. Not getting focused? Let's go back to Frost and do some more damage. It's really, really simple. And finally, the last one you're gonna be using, that I've so, shown you guys so many times, is the Lichborn Death Coil macro where you target yourself, you hit yourself with a Death Coil, and you heal up. It's a great little macro to have in a tight situation. Though I don't use it as much as I used to, due to the fact that I'm using Conversion now more than anything. And Conversion eats your power, as well does the Death Coil macro. So I choose Conversion nine times out of 10, and that's why my, my Lichborn is just there for a breakout. But again, like I said, you will have all the macros in the description below. All right, guys, and that's how I'm running my Frost Death Knight in 5.4. Stay tuned, because coming up, I'll be doing a guide as well on Unholy and the very and oh-so-infamous Blood Death Knight. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like below and a comment to accompany it. Let me know what you think and what you might change or how I could possibly help you in any way. I'll answer as many comments as I can about this. And, uh, yeah, guys, as always.